Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session and uh, happy Tuesday. Let's get underway here. A crazy couple of days that we've had, and uh, we'll spend uh, most of our time really talking about that, about uh, market structure, kind of what's going on, at least from, you know, some price activity and uh, some uh, some ways forward here. But we'll uh, we'll start out with a long-term signal on direction alerts. Uh, we been talking about this bull market rank of in this case it's 26 and even back here you know I was talking about this level being 22 23 24 25 those are just really really extreme levels for this indicator and they just are not sustainable so we're not overly surprised to get some kind of a retracement here some kind of a pullback the question is going to be and has been over the last couple of weeks are we going to get a retracement uh, or are we going to get a full reversal? And we're not there yet, but this is what the early phases of these reversals start to look like, is you start to get just, you know, I've, I, I, I've said it where, you know, the, the baby in the bathwater, everything just gets thrown out. There's just kind of mass selling happening and it becomes uh, unrelenting. And we'll see if today's rally sticks a little bit because we're at a, a corrective zone. Uh, really across all major indices that could get a bounce uh, but that being said we're still going to want to be because of the, the the elevation because of the level of the market currently and i say elevation just where we're at in this trend we're deep into this trend we're deep into the width of this trend this is this is essentially measuring from this point to this point we get we're just expanded a long ways away from that location we also know that you know trends tend to have that 45 degree angle and so once we start to get away from that, particularly on this 20 year chart, even if we're you know, not drawing this line exactly, but we know that we're a long ways away from this sustainable 45 degree trend line, 45 degree just meaning this degree versus a, you know, a steeper degree, or we're starting to get this rally. Once we get these parabolic moves where things start to go straight up, that parabolic move is, t t is it's telltale of a some kind of a reversal. They just never last. Okay, they feel fantastic when you're in them, but they come back down relatively quickly. Sometimes they come back down uh, in days. It took the S&P 500 three months to get to where we're at, uh, and then it took three days for it to unwind all that. So it it does. Uh, the sell-offs happen really, really quickly. Fear, we're, we're still, there's still humans that are driving this market. As much as we talk about algorithms and as much as we talk about high frequency trading and all these different things that are talked about, it's still human beings that are driving the, the greed and the fear cycles. And everybody wants to be in it when it's working and out of it when it's not working. And so that's still, uh, that's still always going to be the case. It's no different, it's never different. It's always the same thing, whether you think it's, you know, it's dot com or subprime or crypto or blockchain or AI. These are these new technologies are amazing and they do change. Uh, they do change and benefit humanity. But in terms of stock price, we, it always overshoots and undershoots. So uh, we're, we get these big run ups and then we get these retracements and these pullbacks. So our job primarily is to you know pick the right direction and manage risk. And that's essentially what we want to be doing at these levels is how much risk do we want to take in a market that is topping out or that is in that is showing signs of topping particularly where really the biggest factors are still inflation interest rates and now recession okay that's really the 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 one of the key points i'll touch on that just a little bit more de detail today shorter term we're seeing now we're seeing momentum all the way back down again we actually saw that on that last correction uh, back here. So this move that we had back here a few months back, uh, we had a pretty aggressive sell-off and we actually got pretty deep down into the momentum levels and then we reversed and headed back higher. We're deeper than that now, a pretty aggressive selling uh, on this most recent move lower. Breath is still you know, holding up right here. It is weakening significantly, but the, one of the big um, uh, indicators here is the sentiment indicator. We talked about how this can stay up in these elevated levels for a long, long time. And this indicator is related to the VIX. VIX, you may have heard that uh, of that indicator, which is essentially the extrinsic value of S&P 500 put options. So the more put options that are being bought, then as that bidding price moves higher, the extrinsic value is just that extra pricing that's 
baked in because of momentum, because of fear. Well, I'm willing to buy put options at any price, or the market participants are willing to buy those puts, and it, and it skyrockets the extrinsic value, and you get that fear. It's a great fear indicator because put options are designed to go up when markets go down. So when you get a flight to those put options, it spikes the VIX, and it tells us that, hey, the, the you know, major players are worried. And that's what, that's what we're interested in. We're, we're interested in major players. We're, we're interested in the market as a whole, really. The market as a whole is the ultimate major player. And who is driving that? There's, there's tens of thousands and millions of individual companies and firms and individuals that are moving the market. So ideally, we want to really try and focus on what is that trend happening. So we definitely have some significant cracks in this trend. We've got buy-sell ratio that is back significantly below one back to 0.17 that was a that was a pretty fast shot down to really that one that uh, under under 0.2 okay we can start to get rallies from this area from here on buy sell ratio typically tip you know typically not when it happens this fast okay from here to here from here to here these these initial moves higher typically say okay we may be in that trend for at least a length of time a matter of weeks okay this rally here which we got a few weeks out of that maybe a, you know 6 8 weeks and then it ultimately kind of weakened and then has rolled over so now we're getting a pretty significant breadth to the bearish side but we're we've already moved deep to those extreme zones this indicator has sentiments down to zero which means it's kind of off the chart right here and we're seeing a rally today just because we're oversold it doesn't mean it's going to stick it doesn't mean it's going to last but when you have aggressive shorting you get aggressive selling then you get uh, a reversal on that it can get a it can give a bounce a location we've also we're also seeing that on nasdaq and then vix while our volatility we're seeing to the upside okay so we're extreme across the board on everything upside on on volatility downside on markets upside on bonds okay that's what we wanted to see we wanted to see bonds rally like this in fact let's jump over here and look at that because let's talk about a little bit of the psychology here on tlt remember what's happening and i like to go back to this chart this is really this is really still in control this bond yield curve okay this this scenario of shorter term interest rates need to come down okay and that's what's happening shorter term interest rates need to come down long term interest rates don't need to come down as much they can they can stay right there but they're probably going to come down a little bit but it's this short end that really needs to drop back down in order for a healthy economy to kind of uh, 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 create a new foundation once again we know at least on the last 20 years and even this indicator the uh, the inverted yield curve or even just yield curves as a whole when we look back this this only goes back to two, uh, to 1993 but if you were to go back i believe back to 1950 an inverted yield curve has has um, forecast a recession almost every time and so that's the that's the fear now okay that's the talk of what is the and, th and think what had to happen right the fed had to raise interest rates why to slow inflation what is inflation inflation is this inflation is the cost of goods and services including equities including real estate including loaves of bread and eggs and milk and gas okay the prices of everything just are going higher well that happens because there's a ton of money in the system. Well, what happens? How does a ton of money get into the system? Well, let's look and see why. Okay, remember COVID back here. What did the Fed do? They they dropped interest rates to basically zero across the board. So companies could borrow money for, for next to nothing, okay, or nothing. They can borrow money with zero interest rates. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna borrow a lot of money and they're gonna put that money to use. Consumers are the same thing. Okay, we have we have mortgages that are two and a half to three and a half percent. We have home equity lines that we can borrow against at super low rates, if not anything. Plus, we're getting stimulus checks. Where's that money going? It's going into goods and services. That creates inflation. Well, for the Fed to reduce that inflation, they have to break it. They have they have to say, oh, no more borrowing. We're going to make borrowing super expensive, and we're going to make short-term savings very compelling right they want money they want money to come out of stocks they want money to come out of 
of borrowing. They want money to, to, to stop borrowing and to go back into savings and stop and stop buying things, right? That inflation just, so instead of buying things, we put the money in the bank and we, and, and we don't borrow anything. Okay? We're, not, we're not pulling money out of our home equity lines at six and a half percent because the, the payments are ridiculous. So, so the whole point of what the Fed is doing is to break things. And so they almost always do it. They're going to create a recession. That's what the market, the market, it just takes time for the market to really decide if that's going to happen or not. And so we started to get earnings like the other day, it was unemployment numbers are spiking. Okay, so companies are slowing down, people are getting laid off. Uh, the, that those are the some of the, the, the indications that there may be some slowing happening in the economy. So now you're getting discussion of should the Fed, you know, have an emergency rate cut. If you remember, if any of you were trading back here in 2007 and 8, it was a, it was kind of the same thing, and and they didn't do it. They were way way too long in waiting, and they always are. So uh, I would be a bit surprised to see you know that they've waited too long here. Uh, who knows, right? We'll just continue to follow what the markets are doing, but we want to certainly be aware of this this being really the. The, the massive controlling factor of equities right now are interest rates, inflation, and uh, really, really that's it. Now, everything else is linked to that. Inflation is linked to that. Uh, recession is going to be linked to that as well. So that being said, we're now starting to see, you know, when we start to see a, a, a bond day that moves like this, this is the bond market saying, hey, Fed, we believe as the bond market that rates have to go lower based on our own analysis and our, and where the big money is going. So the Fed's not controlling the bond market. In this case, they, they are controlling the, the Federal Reserve rates and some of those rates, but in terms of the market, our market's ability to still buy and sell, that's still happening. So we get this real spike the last couple of days. It's starting to pull back. Again, that's kind of a, you know, wipe the sweat off your forehead as, a, as the market is like, oh, okay, well, uh, maybe we're maybe we've gone too far too fast. That being said, S and P 500 has just got obliterated the last couple of days. It's given it's it's returning back. It's given back, or I should say, it's recovered essentially the gap. So it gapped from really here to here yesterday, and so now we get we're we're repla we're, we're coming back to this gap level, back to this 50% level, and some resistance. Now, this is this is that oversold, this normal rally that we start to see when, when anything is oversold. Most of it, it becomes short covering. Remember what short covering is. When, when you short a stock, you can borrow those shares, sell the shares first, and then as it drops, you buy those shares back. And then the number of shares that you borrowed, you give back to the broker and you keep the profit. It's, it's essentially buying low and selling high, but you do it in reverse order. You sell high first and then you buy low second, same idea. But in order to close out that position, you have to buy the shares back. And a short covering rally often takes place in short covering, plus shorter term traders jumping in saying, we're oversold, we're gonna get a bounce. Okay, But the fact of the matter is, are we going to come all the way back up? I who knows that's always a possibility right but the probability now is that we're going to start to uh, have we're going to start to have a fight here we're going to have a fight with all of these levels okay that's why we want to talk about the momentum zone that's why we want to trade in the momentum zone from here because this is now now the momentum is is broken all of the momentum of s p 500 and everything across the board is broken this is now the current trend and to be able for us to rally and come back and find support and rally and come back up and find support and rally and come back up and then retrace and come back up. Hey, this is this is a whole lot of volatility at this point now that may or may not be productive. Okay. And in terms of our methodology to focus on what's trending, focus on that trend while it's working. That's the primary focus that we want to utilize. Not saying that these opportunities and when things are extremely oversold can't produce some profits, but not for very long, okay? Or it's a counter trend trade. It's essentially trying to pick the bottom, let it rally, take the gains and be done, okay? So those are uh, uh, more than likely what's happening right here in the shorter term with uh, equities. Let me just take a look.
Um, question here, am I surprised to see TLT come down again today? Not really, just because of how aggressive that move was. And it's going to correspond with equities. Okay, if you look at, the, this is almost the exact opposite right now of that S&P 500 chart. But look at what it's doing. It's just simply pulled back into, so bonds now are in this momentum zone here. Okay, so now it's it could pull back. It may even, if it were to break that, pull back and retrace. But in terms of the current trend, this six-month time frame on trend, that would be the current trend that I would want to trust. Why would I want to trust it? Because that's the trend. <laughs> okay, I don't. I'm not going to try and anticipate what the Fed's going to do or what the bond market's going to do or what equity participate participants are going to do. It's here, and that's why. And that's why we're looking at it. But will it stay here? Who knows? More than likely. That trend is going to continue to sustain and find some support right here. That's what we we'll want to watch right here. Is we do, we'll see if bonds uh, find some support. We're seeing SHY. SHY is probably the one. Oops, not SPY. SHY is probably one of the ones to be watching even closer because remember SHY is the short end of the yield curve. These are short. These are short-term bonds, one to three-year Treasury bonds, and this one really has had a nice spike in the shorter term. If we go out a little bit longer time frame. To that one year you're getting you know we're getting that move it's already kind of started but the fed has yet to cut the bond market's anticipating but they have yet to do it so uh that potentially could be a you know i, I don't know if it'll be a good thing for equities yet because the damage may already be done we'll just have to follow price activity and see now in terms of allocation that's just, essentially that's the game now as what is our allocation towards each of these different asset classes. Do we want to be in bonds? Do we want to be in stocks? Okay. In terms of in terms of most of the time, in terms of this methodology and trading, we're focused on cash, as I've mentioned before. Now we got stopped out of a bunch of stuff the other day, the last two days. That pulled us back by about three percent on drawdown, but that took us up to almost 90% cash. Okay, so we've got two or three holdings that are coming in. We're still adding in each day. So today we added into RKT. RKT now is is it's a it's Rocket Mortgage. It's a mortgage company. It's based on interest rates. So as it's moving higher, what we want to try and focus on is what is the market telling us? The market is saying, well, this kind of idea, you know, as of right now, is working. Could that also retrace and reverse and move lower? It certainly can. That's that. That is what happens. But as of right now, what I still want to be long equities. I just don't want to be long a large percentage of equities. And I still want to add in each day to the idea that may be working for that time frame. So RKT, at least as of right now, that's a nice looking pattern. This one year time frame. Now remember what happens when interest rates come back down again. People refinance, people get new mortgages, people start buying houses again. Maybe there's a big pent up demand for that. And Rocket Mortgage is, a, is probably one of the biggest pl online players for mortgages and for refinancing and things like that. So it kind of makes sense that it's an anticipation of that boom, that mortgage refi type of thing. Will it end up happening? Who knows? That's what you know, the market is always looking forward. The market is always anticipating what's coming. So we can get a move like this, wh whether it holds or not. You know, here's the interesting pattern on this: is you have big volume here you've got big volume here we'll see what this turns out but just these last two days and you had a gap lower and then it rallied a gap lower and it rallied as the market got obliterated okay so this there was definitely some money going into this name during the last couple of days whether that allows that trend to continue to sustain um who knows okay that's that's all we can do is just continue to trust those trend directions manage our risk place our stop losses so that when we are wrong that, or I shouldn't say wrong. I when 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 the trade doesn't work, okay. The pattern unfolds the way that, it, that that what we expect every single time is for that to continue higher. And there's times where that's just that just flat out doesn't work. We get stopped out of things, and that's okay. I'd rather protect the capital and protect what we have, and then reevaluate sitting in cash instead of reevaluate sitting on big losses. Okay, that's that stinks. There's no there's no fun in that. So. Getting stopped out is just a natural, normal part of this of this method, and be okay with that. Okay, be comfortable with a stop out. I would much rather have a stop out and knowing where my risk is, knowing what I'm down, instead of saying, "Good Lord, I'm down, I'm down 50% because I didn't take my stop." Okay, I promise that will happen on on a trade that you don't put a stop on. Okay, even yesterday we got in the trade, it stopped out within. 
five minutes and uh and that's that's just that's just a part of the game it gets frustrating obviously but right now these market conditions are going to be frustrating so we also we don't want to force things by having too many positions or say or by saying oh my gosh i sold too soon and now look what's happening the market's finding a bottom and it's starting to rally again it's back up two percent i need to pile back in okay that's knee jerk that's not a strategy that's not a methodology that's just that's just guessing okay so in terms of the where we're at and why we know that the market conditions are very elevated we know we have an inverted yield curve we know the fed and the bond market and interest rates and inflation are fighting that's a battle that in order for that to happen that's going to slow the economy it just has to okay lower inflation means a slower economy that you can't have one without the other but that's the balance right now so now it's do we did we do we have enough slow slowness of inflation to for the fed to start cutting rates okay that's what the market wants to see if the market starts to see aggressive rate cuts uh we may see a pretty significant rally back up again and that's fine as that happens stocks will be moving into those new buy signals stocks will be moving back to the upside and we'll be able to get back in again and more than likely it'll be different stocks than the stocks we get stopped out of okay the ones we get stopped out of sometimes recover and we get new opportunities sometimes they don't and there are other stocks that become the leaders of the group uh, the uh, so let's uh, let's go back here. So I wanted to, again, just revisiting where we're at. So we're at the upper end of the trend, very, you know, to the to this upside here, um, the long-term trend sitting at this range of 26. So in this case, I, I, I'm, I'm fine going up to 20 to 25% here, but we got stopped out of so many things so fast. That, that's the market just telling us, hey, our cash position needs to be a little bit higher right now, and that's okay. I would rather have that than, um, you know, and some of those are recovering today, but again, it's just like a, I, I use the example of a football play or a, any kind of a play. The Olympics are going on right now, so maybe consider that. It's, you know, Simone Biles does this amazing floor routine. When it's over, it's over. She has to accept what she gets. In, th in this case, it's always gold, but, once you know you watch any other gymnast when it's done it's done sometimes they have amazing runs sometimes they they blow it and they have they have to just immediately move on to the next thing to the next in our case it's the next trade and we we can look back and we can learn and say ah sh did i set the stop to, uh, the stop was it too tight was my position size too big was it too small uh, was it, you know, and evaluating the trading plan versus evaluating how we reacted to the situation. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't ever be reacting to our emotion or saying, oh, why did I do that? Or, oh, why did I do that? Or, oh, I should have done this. Okay. That's going to happen as, the, as, as you're focused in learning a, a, a trading methodology and a trading plan. Okay. But saying, oh my gosh, I, I'm going all in, you know, Mark, I, I heard this on CNBC and I really believe the market's going to bottom out. So I'm going all in, I, you know, that that's not a trading plan. That's just not. So it's, it's, it might be fun and it might be emotion, full of emotion and there's an adrenaline rush and a lot of traders get these, you know, these dopamine um, hits anytime you have a win or a loss. I prefer, I don't want any emotion. I don't want to feel a stinking thing anytime I have a winner or a loser or a stop out. It just has to be mechanical. And um, at least for me, that tends to, and I think for a, a lot of traders and investors, that tends to work a little bit better. As long, and, and that can be different. Mine can be different. Yours can be different. It's with understanding what your risk is, understanding what your tolerance for the volatility is, understanding that, you know, if you got stopped out at eight trades, like we did the last two days, what does that do? What does that do to the emotion? Okay. What does that do to, um, to be able to take a trade today? Okay. To be able to jump in and take this trade and say, Oh my gosh, I got stopped out of so many things. I don't want to do anything right now. I'm just going to bury my head in the sand and do nothing. I don't even want to look at my trading account. Well, that's what happens when there is no strategy and when there is no plan. So making sure those stop losses are sound, making sure they're followed and making sure they're set up so that when we do get out and we have, uh, we have some losers. So here's some of those stop outs. Um, so here in the last couple of days, these two were stopped out with small gains. These three or four were stopped out with small losses. The day before that, we had a little bit larger losses, some full stops that 10, 15%, 
those hurt. But if you look at the overall dollar amount here, you know, 70, 100 bucks, a couple hundred bucks, these are typically about as big of loss as we get because of the position size. Two to three hundred dollars is typically the max loss that we're going to be dealing with based on position size. And then we're going to have, you know, when we get some winners, there'll be some winners in there. We've had a lot of things stopped out uh, that just during this last couple of weeks and months. And that's not surprising based on the way this market structure has been looking at. So let's just kind of recap here. We also have VIX. So if you look at when you go in here to the indexes and you look at market ETFs, this one here, this ProShares, it's an ETF. The symbol on it is VIXY. It's not exact to the VIX, but it does give you an indication of uh, some of the volatility that we're seeing. That was a huge spike yesterday, a massive move back lower again. But when we see these big spikes, that's that that typically is not the end of it. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see some volatility, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see some rallying here, some support, some pullbacks. We'll be watching news, you know, primarily economic data. Economic data is important. Um, everyone's perspective of that economic data is where we start to get all these different, you know, uh, uh, opinions uh, of that economic data. But if, but for the most part, when the market agrees uh, on the economic data, you get solid moves to the upside or to the downside. This was a pretty solid move that risk was adjusting, but you're getting some fear of missing out. You're going to get some FOMO now because we're still in a bull market. Okay, we're still in this uptrend. This two-year time frame, that's that, that's just a blip. Okay, this doesn't this doesn't look that significant. If you watch CNBC, you'd think the world's coming to an end, but it's just not. It's just we're getting a retracement. It's a pretty it's pretty aggressive selling. There's no question about that. Uh, is it based on the long-term perspective of the market? Could we roll over and break through this one as well? Uh, we certainly could. We could get a deeper retracement even back into some of these ranges. We're not there yet, but we're testing it. We're testing this longer term, this two-year time frame, even that one-year time frame. Now we're under the 236, that 505, probably after we retest this level, watch for some more downside, watch for this range to be tested. That's why I say just be cautious on position size, be cautious on um, on the number of trades and uh, and and decide what works. Okay, decide what works. Cash is fine. Cash is great right now because you get no volatility and you get a little bit of interest. And we can start to put our toe back in the water. And we're doing that every day. Okay, we're doing that every day by adding back into the trades. There may be a different group of leaders that start to happen. We we didn't have much to choose from honestly on the new buys. So we're actually looking inside the muscle stocks group and looking for some of those leaders that are happening here. You have USAP, which is a steel name. Okay, this is an interesting pattern right here as well. We own, we actually still own one steel name. Um, it is ASTL. Held up a little bit yesterday, giving a little bit back today, but those there, there are pockets that are continuing to hold up right here at these levels. ASTS uh, holding up really nicely as well. That's uh, Space Mobile. We're in that one. Uh, up about 50% so far, and that held up pretty nicely during this counter trend. So we'll continue to hold on to that one. Um, let me just double check again, sectors. We're watching these sectors to see, you've got utilities, you've got consumer goods that are that are still in that momentum zone. They had a pretty big sell off yesterday, really with everything. Yesterday was really large distribution across the board. And that is, uh, that's 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 really the perspective, in my opinion, of where we're standing right now, and that is we're we're bearish in a bull market. Okay, the bearishness in the bull market is just because of this right now. Okay, we're retracing still, we're retracing still, but we're still in a bull market. We're still in the uptrend, uh, but we're starting to play with some le some levels now that may roll that over. We're extreme to the, to the downside. We could see a rally back up. I wouldn't get super excited about any of these rallies just because more than likely they're, they're gonna start to fade and they've got a bunch of resistance now uh, across the board that they could be running into and uh, and making sure that those position sizes are, are there. The, the name of the game is to stay in the game, okay? Particularly once we start to get volatility and roll over into some bear markets, we're just not going to get the amazing returns that we're going to get during a good solid uptrend, a good solid bull market right here. So 
It's just about right now, it's about preservation of capital. It's about taking smaller position size. It's about letting a little bit of the dust settle. It's about picking some of the names that look like they could be working based on the same, the same process and the same pattern. Okay, if we're looking at RKT, for example, and we go into that trade today, here, here are some of the criteria. Upper momentum zone, solid confirmation bar, which was this bar yesterday, increased volume over the last two days, really, and those gaps lower, and uh, and it's in that, the, the theme also works, the mortgage theme, the fact that interest rates uh, need to come back down and that they probably will start to come back down pretty soon, that's gonna make the mortgage market pretty happy. And you can see this, you know, stock, this, the stock market is also kind of concurring with that theme. And we don't have to, we, we don't necessarily have to always be trying to find the theme the market will will present the theme to us and say here here is here are the stocks that are working there's a whole bunch that aren't working which sometimes affects other stocks that are working but there are pockets of things that are working we just don't want to be loaded up on a ton of them we had a pretty big port uh, pretty big portfolio going into the last couple of days that stopped out and and it wasn't it, it, it hurt but it wasn't super extreme to the point that we can't recover from that Okay, we always want to be able, in this case, getting stopped out of six trades, seven trades, and having a drawdown of about 4%, um, that's, that's entirely manageable. And that's the kind of risk that we want to be taking so that we're, we, we don't get a really big drawdown, a 12, you know, 10, 15% drawdown um, at, at one time. Because now, for the most part, we're out of most equities. The market can continue to fall off a table. And we're not going to have that much exposure right now, which is really what I want. I don't want a lot of exposure right here, uh, particularly as markets are trying to find some footing. They, you know, they will eventually, but not without some some backing and filling, some retracement. Remember that markets overshoot and undershoot, and ultimately will revert to the mean. Okay? The mean meaning the average. The average for most, you know, for most stocks and markets is a 45 degree angle. Start to get too far up, it's going to come back start to get too far down, it's going to rally back up. So, so with some of those levels and ideas that we're looking for, it's about position size and stop location and the, and the stocks that we're looking at right here as well. I'm going to end on that note. Uh, appreciate everyone's time and effort, and we will uh, see you on Thursday. Thanks a lot. Bye now.